Hi, this is Igor from hdhead.com. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how an attacker can gain access to a DaVinci Resolve database and also show you how to protect your Postgres server from attacks. Facility data security is a huge deal these days. As the world's most commonly used color correction system, DaVinci Resolve can be a high value target for attackers. I'm unaware of any actual security breaches involving Resolve, but you don't want to have your machine become the first one to go down. Uh, one thing I want to make very clear is that the vulnerability that I'm about to describe is not due to any bugs in Resolve or Postgres server. While minimal admin skills are necessary to follow this tutorial and enact the security recommendations at the end, the exploit itself requires only script kitty abilities. Now, let's first see if your system is safe to begin with. Resolve uses one of two methods to save the project data. You either use the disk database or the Postgres database. If you're using the disk database, you're safe. Also, you're safe if you're not using remote database server as per the Resolve manual. If either of these two conditions apply, you may stop watching this tutorial right now. The Resolve Postgres attack consists of four steps. I'm using a Linux laptop to attack a Windows Resolve, but the platform choice is really arbitrary. I could also be using an OS X computer to attack a Linux version of Resolve or any other permutation of OSs. In order to attack a Postgres server, we have to be on the same network as the server. Here in the Linux command line, we'll run ifconfig command to get my laptop's local IP address, which is right up here it's 192.168.1.101. Now, with the IP address available, we can scan the entire subnet looking for the machines with the open port 5432. This is a standard port for Postgres. We'll use the nmap tool to do this. This command will scan all of the IP addresses in this 192.168.1 range looking for port 5432. Any machine that responds with open in the port description could be hosting the Resolve Postgres database, but we don't know that just yet. And here we have a machine with an open port 5432 and an IP address of 192.168.1.118. All the other machines reported in this scan are saying that the port is filtered, which means it's closed. This only means the port is open. It doesn't mean there's a Postgres behind it. In order to establish that, we have to attempt to connect to a server using PSQL, which is a command line front end for Postgres. If we succeed in connecting, that means that the server is behind that port. We'll attempt to log into what we think may be a Postgres server by using Resolve's default username and password. The username is Postgres, and the password is DaVinci, as per the Resolve manual. Uh, this command psql will launch psql dash h is the host machine we're connecting to that's the uh, ip address we found through the port scan and capital u postgres that's the username that we're attempting to connect with and we're in using the default credentials at this point we can do a lot of damage to demonstrate the extent of things we can do let's make changes to an existing resolve project and i mean changes coming from the psql command line not from Resolve itself. So let's look at here. We have a Resolve timeline with a single title effect which says pizza. Go back to PSQL and we will list all the databases by using the L plus command to identify a possible target for an attack. Depending on how the Resolve is set up, you may see one or more databases. Some databases are also there by default, but the largest of them are likely to belong to a Resolve. And if you look here on the right side, there's a column called size. And uh, there's one database that measures the size in megabytes, which is bigger than any of the other ones. And here on the left, under the name column, it's called resolve database. So this is the database that we're going to connect to. And to do that, we say C resolve database. And now we can snoop around. For example, if we execute DT, this command will list all the tables in the database. Or we can do select project name from sm underscore project. This statement will list the names of all the projects in this database. As you can see, there are two projects there. And let's go back to resolve, project manager, 
yes, those are the same names as the names that we see over here in PSQL. So what we want to do here is actually change that title that says pizza to something else. This is going to be a long statement to type. Instead, I'm just going to copy and paste it in the command line here. This is kind of like search and replace in a uh, word processor. We'll go back to the resolve. The title still says pizza because it is stored in RAM. To refresh the timeline from the database, we'll open another project and then immediately switch back to our original test project. And there you go. The title says pwned. So this is very interesting in itself, but it gets worse. There are several ways to dump the database, which means download the database. We'll exit PSQL with Q command and use pgdump on the Linux command line. What this does is it will save a file locally, a file called stolendb.txt, and this text file will contain the contents of a resolved database. And we have dumped the resolved database to a plain text file that we can read. Here's the contents of the file. Let's look for the word test that was part of our project name. And here it is. Even though this format is somewhat human readable, a more savvy hacker would analyze it with automated tools instead of reading it off the screen like we are doing here for the demo. But perhaps the most trivial way to do this would be to restore the dump into a resolve running on another machine. By doing that, we would recreate the projects in their entirety. We would not have the media, but we'd have access to all the clips and timelines. The names of projects, timelines, and clips, as well as the content of markers, would help us identify high-value targets if we were a hacker. The file paths would allow us to build a blueprint for the attack. So for example, a file called highvalueclip.mxf that's stored in a directory called don't share would probably make a hacker curious. Such a path would tell the hacker exactly where to look for high security media. Hacking Postgres would not give the attacker access to any media, but it would help guide the attacker to the media. And this whole process could be highly scripted where the attacker could dump the databases and generate a media target list in minutes. Illustrating this last step of dropping the database is practical in case you ever need to do it for legitimate reasons. Dropping a database means deleting a database. And here's a tip. Resolve never deletes databases. It can only disconnect them from the database manager, so they don't appear there, but they are not deleted. They're still in your Postgres server. To drop a database, we'll close Resolve, and we will launch PSQL again, and we'll say drop database and the database name, which is Resolve Database. Now if we use the L command to list the databases, the Resolve Database is no longer there. If we launch Resolve, The database is indeed missing, and Resolve defaults to disk database. There are several steps you should take to make your Resolve database reasonably secure. The clients and personnel without the admin privileges should never have access to the network where Resolve Postgres server lives. Ideally, the Resolve database server and all the instances of resolves should be segregated to their own subnet, if possible. If you're not sharing projects among one or more resolves, turn off the database sharing in pg underscore hba dot conf file, which is right here in the Windows implementation. By default, the remote database server is disabled in this configuration file. More information is available in the manual under configuring and using a remote database server. The Resolve version 12.5 manual implies that you should keep using the default password for Postgres, uh, which is DaVinci. This makes things easy, but it also makes it dangerous, as you have just seen. Replacing the password with a unique password would secure the database, but modifying the database password is not possible from within Resolve. I'm going to show you how to do it in PSQL. Changing the password is easier now that we have deleted the database in the previous step. We'll say alter user Postgres with encrypted password DaVinci 
X. Of course, you would substitute this with uh, whatever you want your password to be and uh, make sure to store the password in a secure place. We'll go back to Resolve and open the Database Manager. And I'm going to restore an older database backup that I made before starting to record this tutorial. In the pop-up window, we will enter the new password in the password field and create a new Postgres database from the backup. As you can see now, the previous state of the project has been restored. We'll go back to the command line and we'll attempt to log into PSQL using the original default DaVinci password. And here you go. We're no longer able to gain access with the old password. Thank you for watching. For more good stuff, visit hdhead.com. Thanks to Stampede Post Productions where I came across this vulnerability while writing a database backup script. And thanks to David Egren of trillionpictures.com. David is a top expert in database integration with post-production tools. Beware that any database modification as described in this tutorial can result in a permanent loss of data.